All right, let me, let me begin. I want to start with a, a personal comment about this Roy Moore scandal because I've been thinking about it all weekend. And I, I, I won't get into you know, too much information or anything like this, but I actually believe that every male commentator who is commenting on this huge sex scandal, which is now sweeping Hollywood and politics and the state houses and all this, and now has hit this candidate for the special election for, to replace Jeff Sessions as senator in Alabama, I think that every male candidate is actually operating under the unspoken threat of feminist blackmail. And the reason I think that is because I think every young man has done something that he regrets, okay? Women have no clue. They have no clue what it is like to be a young man. It is like being tied to a rocket, a rocket which basically wants to plant itself in every female that walks by. And some men, many men, handle this quite well, but a lot of them handle it well because of fear. They're afraid of getting caught. They're afraid of getting disease. They're afraid of all kinds of things. But they are all dealing with a power that women know nothing about. Women do not know it. So every man who talks about this is afraid that if he goes off the feminist line, that every accuser has to be believed, that every man has done something bad, that every little thing is somehow a tremendous crime against humanity instead of part of the complexity of working with women and being around women. Uh, everyone's afraid, oh my God, something will come out. Something will, uh, you know, about me will come out and I can be destroyed just like all these other people I see being destroyed around me. So I want to start with a personal statement, which is this. I have been married now for 37 years, I think it is. 37 years. Impressive. Th what's that? Impressive. Impressive. It is impressive, and I have been faithful to my wife. I have been faithful to my wife, and I think also since 37 years is a basically my adult professional life, I think you can go back. I have worked, as I work to this very day, I have worked with some of the most beautiful women on earth because I've worked in Hollywood, I have worked in publishing, and I've worked in the news business. That's where the pretty girls go. I've worked with them, them all. Some of them were available. I have. I think you can interview any woman I worked with, and she will tell you that I have treated her with respect. I haven't chased anyone around the room. I haven't, you know, cheated, grabbed anybody, even talked, uh, you know, a lot of sex in front of people. Even Jess will say that about me. Jess doesn't even like me. She will. <laughs> I, I, I may abuse you personally, but I don't sexually abuse people. However, however, as a young man, as I've written about this in my memoir, The Great Good Thing, I was out of my mind. I was sick. I was twisted. I was angry. I was nuts, and did things that I regret to this day. I wake up in the, you know, in the middle of the night and think, oh my God, I've done terrible, terrible things because I was this sick guy. And all I can say about that guy is he's dead. I know he's dead because I killed him <laughs> with my own two hands. And, you know, I mean, like a lot of psychiatry and a lot of, you know, God and, you know, I'm, made me the man I am today. And I, I you know, a hundred times I have gone to God and said, look, I'm a person of goodwill. Why did I ever have to be that person? And I think the answer is it has made me slow to judge. It's why when you hear me talking about Jesus, you're not hearing me say like, this is a sin and that's a sin and why don't we condemn this and you did that and this. I don't do that because I have looked into the heart of darkness and it was my heart. I have been there. I understand. I understand the pain of people who do bad things. I understand the twistedness and the fact that you're out of control. And so I, I just put that forward to say to you that this is the point of view that I'm coming from this, that I'm coming to this from. And having said that, and, and I'm not afraid of anybody saying things about me because I'll, I'll tell you, you know, there's, there's stuff there, you know, that I, I wish hadn't happened. That guy is dead. I live as I live today and have lived for 37 years. So having said that, I believe we're now in the middle of a witch hunt. Okay, and you say, well, what are you talking about, a witch hunt? Harvey Weinstein, you know, Harvey Weinstein, this rape and, and Louis C.K., you know, doing terrible things in front of people. This is two things you have to know about a witch hunt. There are always real witches. Some of the people who get caught in witch hunts are real witches. And this was true back when there were actual witch hunts. The difference is that we no longer believe in witches, so we no longer respect people for being afraid of witches. But if we had lived back then, we would have been certain there were witches. It wasn't like you would have doubted it. You would have been absolutely certain that some people were witches and needed to be destroyed before they destroyed you or your crops or whatever. So in witch hunts, there are always real witches. And this is true in old times and it's true now. So that over the weekend, USA Today put out a list of guys who have been accused and I'm reading the list. And there's Harvey Weinstein who did 
terrible things, maybe include, he's accused of actual rape. I mean, that is, you know, the crime under murder that we think is the worst thing. And I, I agree, it's a terrible thing to do to somebody. But then there's Dustin Hoffman. And Dustin Hoffman's an 80-year-old man. And what's he accused of? He's accused of talking dirty in front of wom a woman and, you know, maybe inviting a woman to his hotel. And it's like, I, I don't care. I don't even, you know, when you put those two things on the same list, you're basically making the list this kind of moral cloud. That's a witch hunt. You know, guys do things, they ask, and women Women invite things and women are seductive, you know, and act in a transactional way sometimes. Who knows what happens? I don't care what Dustin, if Dustin Hoffman talked dirty in front of someone. One of the reasons I behave the way I do is because I'm not a feminist. One of the reasons I treat women with respect is because I'm not a feminist. I'm a patriarch. I'm an old-fashioned patriarch who believe there's a difference between men and women, that men have to look out for women a little bit. Women don't like to talk about it, but there it is. You know, that once, once women say, as feminists have been telling us now for 60 years, once they say, oh, we're exactly the same, then there's no reason when you come into a workplace that women's rules should rule instead of men's rules. Men talk dirty. Men say terrible things. You know, men like to make grotesque jokes. The only reason they shouldn't do that is if patriarchy is in place, is if it's in place that these men have to watch out for the women around them. I'm a patriarch. I'm old-fashioned. I'm a gentleman. I believe I have to watch out for people. You know, so that's different. But feminists have no case. They have no argument. So in this witch hunt, we now have Roy Moore, right? Roy Moore is this Bible-thumping guy, defends the Ten, the Ten Commandments, you know, is always talking about uh, the evils of gay people and the evils of transgender people and blah, 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 blah. And it makes a big show of it. And now he has been picked over Luther Strange, who was the guy that Trump supported, Steve Bannon supported Roy Moore, and he was picked to uh, run against the Democrat in a very red state, Alabama, f to replace Jeff Sessions as senator. Now the Washington Post comes out with a report. And what does the report say? It says that in 1979, when he was 31 or 32, Roy Moore was dating teens, lots of teens. Some guy has said we knew he was hanging out in high schools and all this. The age of consent in Alabama is 16. One of these girls, who tells a very elaborate, you know, detailed story, uh, was at the time 14, and he touched her through her underwear, took her home. He was a DA, an ADA, and uh, he took her home when she was involved in some case with her mother. I mean, it's a, it's a really kind of a, a bad story. And, uh, you know, it matters what the law is because we're not really in the uh, business of judging other people's sex lives, no matter what they're running for. But a 14-year-old, in my mind, can't give informed uh, consent to a 32-year-old. She said she didn't enjoy what was going on, uh, you know, and it, it is completely out of line. I mean, it's basically, it's not, I'm not going to call it child molesting, but it's, you know, it's basically going after an underage girl, and it's not right. It's not right. So Moore, over the weekend, he talked to Hannity, and it, to my mind, he, he basically admitted the part about dating teens. So the, what I'm saying about the WAPO piece is that there's one charge in there of breaking the law, though. A charge that he was with a 14-year-old girl is the charge of breaking the law. The other things are about dating youngish, youngish women. So this is one charge. It, to my mind, on the Hannity show, he basically admitted <laughs> that he dated teens. Is no, Cut number three. This is the question and answer there. Would it be unusual for you as a 32-year-old guy to have dated a woman as young as 17? That would be a, what, 15-year difference or a girl 18. Do you remember dating girls that young at that time? Not generally, no. But, if I did, I, you know, I'm not going to dispute anything, but I don't remember anything like that. But you don't specifically remember having any girlfriend that was in her late teens even at that time? No, I don't remember that, and I don't remember ever dating any girl without the permission of her mother. And I think in her statement, she said that her mother actually encouraged her to go out with me. <laughs> so he's lying. Basically, he says, I don't remember doing it, but her mother encouraged her to do it. And you know, <laughs> so he's lying. He dated teens. Did he, but he adamantly denies the 14-year-old girl charge, says he never knew her, didn't happen. He made, this, he made the statement to Hannity, but then he made it publicly. So let's listen to his public statement about this. Cut five. These attacks involve a minor, and they are completely false and untrue about something that happened nearly 40 years ago. But more than being completely false and untrue, they're very hurtful to me personally. I want to make it clear to the media present and to the people present, I have not provided alcohol beverages, alcoholic beverages, beer, or anything else 
to a minor. I have not been guilty of sexual misconduct with anyone. This article is a prime example of fake news, an attempt to divert attention from the true issues which affect our country. Okay, now here's the second thing I want to say about a witch hunt. In a witch hunt, you and I are swept up into the emotion, right? It's not other people who do the witch hunt, it's everybody. Everybody is in on the witch hunt because you have to react because people are screaming at each other and your friends are screaming and everybody's screaming and you have to feel like, I, gotta, I have to come down, I have to have an opinion, I have to know. You know, here he is, the guy's denying this. I was thinking even before this happened that in this atmosphere, this would be an easy time to set somebody up. You get a couple of women, you get a couple of women who you know the guy was with, and then you throw in a woman who maybe wasn't with him. That's a good setup. It's a good setup. It doesn't mean he's, he's telling the truth. We know he, we're pretty sure he lied about the teenage girls on Hannity, so we, it's hard now to trust him. The girl did not come to the Washington Post. The Washington Post went out and got him. Moore keeps saying, well, why did she wait you know, 40 years to come forward? That's not a good question. That's actually not a good question. The Washington Post, doing a hit job on a candidate they don't like, went out and found this girl. She didn't want to talk. So th that's really not a good argument. But, um, but the thing is, everybody is now falling into place along their political lines. Everybody, everybody, even the people who are being sanctimonious are falling into place along the political lines. The political establishment, which hates Roy Moore, including the White House, which didn't want him, they're saying if it's true, he should step down, and if not, he should fight. That, that seems to me the kind of clearest, it's the most establishment thing, but it, it's a clear moral stance, right? If, he's, if it's true, step down. If it's not true, you should stand and fight. Why should you be pilloried by the press? Of course, the press, they're the witch finder generals. They're the ones in charge because this is, this is the guy they hate because he's on the right and he's on the far right. You know, so th they, they've come out with these statements, unbelievable statements. Uh, Fredo, what's his guy, what's his name? Cuomo on uh, CNN. <laughs> he is the Fredo of the Cuomo family, and I'm not so fond of the Cuomo family altogether. Cuomo, and here's, here's a little uh, quick montage, a two-person montage we put together of Cuomo and, uh, Mar is it Martha Raddatz at ABC? They can't believe that anybody would wait to find out if it's true. Listen to this. Democratic candidate had a story come out today that... Uh, we found a 14-year-old young uh, woman at the time, now much older, okay? So the candidate was much younger, just like in the Roy Moore story. And she said, well, now that you got me I, and told this story, would you feel the same way about it? That, boy, you know, this Democratic candidate, he needs to, let's give him every benefit of the doubt and let's see if there's any other proof other than this woman reluctantly coming forward and saying, when I was 14, he touched me here, he touched me there, and I asked him to take me home. I was very uncomfortable. I wanted it to end. Would you be so open-minded? I, I'm taking politics out of this. I, I, I don't, I don't care. know how you can, because I, every comment that's made by people on the right is defending and putting in context of political utility. The, well, let's see if it's true. Well, boy, the timing is suspicious. These are not things that you say when you're being sensitive to the women in the case. They just are not. I think generally you hear, you know, we don't know, and it was 40 years ago, sort of the things that Roy Moore was saying, there, that if if he did that. And, and I don't know really how you take this further. You've got four women on the record who the Washington Post sought out. They didn't come to the Washington Post and, and 30 others who they talked to. So I don't really know what those voters are waiting for. Oh, you don't, do you? Maybe they're waiting for proof. A, and it's not four women. It's one woman who is accusing him of illegality. And if the press, especially the left-wing press, is going to start to lecture us on dating young women, let me show you a cover. What is this, from People Magazine? I found this cover from People. Yeah, People Magazine. Jerry Seinfeld. Look who's in love. Jerry Seinfeld, 39, and Shoshana Lonstein, 18, make an unlikely romance work. These guys have been undermining our sexual mores for the last 60 years, and now they're suddenly telling us, oh, we suddenly have to turn, you know, on this candidate because he's dating young women. That's not going to work. That doesn't work. That's the first thing. The second thing is they're essentially, especially Cuomo, who is... The guy is as dumb as a brick. <laughs> Cuomo is basically saying, how can you doubt us? We're the press. We doubt you because you lie. You, li you know, there was a story last week about uh, Trump's bodyguard, I think it was. Um, let, me, let me make sure I got it. Uh, yeah, his, his bodyguard. Uh, he was in Congress. They were investigating the Steele dossier, the thing that said that the Russian, that Trump had slept with these Russian hookers and all this stuff. And the guy said 
that um, after a business meeting before the Miss Universe pageant in 2013, he's testifying to Congress, a Russian participant offered to send five women to Donald Trump's hotel room in Moscow. His longtime bodyguard told Congress this week, according to three sources who were present for the interview. Two of the sources said the bodyguard, Keith Schiller, viewed the offer as a joke and immediately responded, we don't do that type of stuff. So essentially the steel document is now, like, debunked by this guy, right? He's saying it didn't happen. So GQ, which has now become a left-wing uh, cesspit, says, runs a story with the headline, isn't it strange how more of the Steele dossier keeps checking out? That's the, and, and NBC, guy at NBC tweeted out, uh, if, you know, Trump was offered Russian hookers. Yeah, but it didn't say he turned them down. They thought it was a joke. He wasn't, we don't do that kind of stuff. So they lie. I mean, remember the, the guy from Time Magazine saying the bust of Martin Luther King had been removed from the Oval Office? Because he didn't see it. He didn't happen to see it. And then they said, oh, it was just a mistake. Not a mistake. These guys have been doing hit pieces on Donald Trump. Every word out of his mouth has been, you know, reconfigured to be, the, to give it its worst possible meaning. Everything is a scandal. Everything he does is wrong. So they lie. So why should anybody believe him? But the bigger divide here is between the people who support Trump and the never Trumpers. And that's what I will talk about in a moment. 